Good morning and happy Sunday. Um, just to make a correction, I just found out that I have four names. I have Georgie, Matthew, Burgis, Chitretha. And so for those who are wondering in the back, they're like, Georgie, Matthew, what's I don't remember if that was your name. I was like, yeah, I have four different names. So uh, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Georgie. I currently, I'm from Dallas. Um, uh, my parents and my brother and family were all from Dallas, but I currently serve on staff at one church in Long Island, New York. Um, so I, it's just a grateful opportunity for Pastor and Joseph Alpen and family to give me this opportunity just to take a few minutes and share the word. When he asked me, I was like, don't give me any time. I don't need any time. I'd rather give the time for everyone else who needs to share a word. And um, But he's like, no, take the time, take it now. I was like, um, so I'll take a few minutes and just share what the Lord has been putting on my heart. And um, uh, we'll go from there. Amen. So if you're here in the house of the Lord and you are, your heart and your mind is prepared, just keep your heart uh, receiving and open to what the Lord is speaking. Um, I want you to remind you that it's not a word from me. It's not a word that, uh, God, um, that I'm fabricating or that I come from my own knowledge and wisdom. It's what the Lord has put on my heart to share this morning. So as we get ready to receive, uh, make sure that your distractions are put away. Really give God the attention and the reverence to be able to receive from the Holy Spirit this morning. Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> um, before we get right into it, uh, I want to congratulate also Jewel and Ajin for getting married yesterday. Um, me and Jewel kind of uh, caught up in between the last year trying to get figure out, like, you know, uh, all the immigration stuff. But praise God for, uh, you heard their testimony. I'm not going to go into it, but I want to congratulate them on behalf of um, my, myself and uh, my wife Janice and the rest of our family. Um, uh, Praying that uh, they be starting um, this new life together, trusting on the Lord, and only depending on the Lord personally and as a family. So um, as we get onto the understanding of depending on the Lord, uh, just show the hands. Do you remember the good old days? You remember the good old days when you had no back pain, no knee pain, and, uh, you know, a few of us have a hundred few white hairs coming out, and some of us haven't seen each other. like, hey, you look a hundred years older than I saw it last. But... Remember the good old days. We used to say that. It's a, it's a phrase that some of us say, remember the good old days. And I said, I said that recently. I, um, I've, my family knows I'm kind of injury prone. And so I, I've, I've hurt my knees and my shoulders. I've had surgeries left and right. And they're like, when are you going to stop? You know, just give up, give up the sports and the working out. I was like, I'll never stop because that's just who I am. I'm going to keep pushing forward. But I, the other week I was just uh, you know, meditating on the Lord and, I, and that word came. Remember the good old days. Um, and I just want to remind us that even though you may say remember the good old days a hundred times, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So even, the, <clears throat> even the, the good old days from yesterday and the good old days from 10 years ago or the good old days when you were nice and healthy and strong, that's the same Christ that we serve yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He's been only constant and unchanging in his character. So when our strength is at the lowest, when our spirit is at its lowest, and our faith is at its lowest, let's remember the good old days of how God is our only strength and our only refuge. Amen. So turn with me or flip with me or click Daniel chapter 2. We're just going to go right into it. Um, and many of us know the story of Daniel. So I'm just going to give you a little quick uh, overview. Um, th if you want to break up the life of Daniel into three parts, the way we would naturally do it is, you were a child, you were an adult, now you're, you know, in your elder years. So in his teenage years, Daniel was held captive in Babylon with only the hope and the promises of God. And in his adult years, he was left to be chief in the office, overseeing many kings and leaders. And as he got older, he, he was yet tested again. He was thrown into the lion's den. So I wonder, I wonder how, how stretched out he was, not just once, but the many seasons of being stretched out, he had to go through. See, we don't talk enough about stretched out seasons. We talk about oh, all the seasons that we went through, so many struggles, pains, and all the tribulations, temptations, but we don't talk about how much we've been stretched out. We tend to look at our stretched and stressed seasons more than that, and we forget that God's strength is what is birthed from those moments of struggle and fears and those hills and those valleys. And so, what I, I want to make sure that you take away this morning is that when you remember the good old days, you also remember that God has been stretching you through those good old days. And only because of the stretching and those seasoned times is when you get your strength from. And it's not a strength that you can come up with on your own, but a strength that the Lord gives us. So 
um, if we look at Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, I'm just going to summarize the first half of it. it. It was about uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, and he had this dream, and he reached out to every wise person he could, and he asked them, can you interpret my dream? Can you tell me what my dream was? And he had magicians, he had wise folks, he had uh, tarot readers, everyone that he could think of come and say, hey, give me some more time, give me some more time, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you. And he was getting so angry that he said, you know, if no one interprets my dreams, I'm just going to kill all of you. I'm just done with it. He just, he's made a decree, I'm just done with it. So let's go to uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse 14. And it's going to be a few verses. <clears throat> So it says um, in verse 14 on, When Arioch, the commander of the king's guard, came to kill them, Daniel handled the situation with wisdom and discretion. He asked Arioch, Why has the king issued such a harsh decree? So Arioch told them all that had happened. Daniel went at once to see the king and requested more time to tell the king what he, the, the dream meant. Then Daniel went home and told his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, what had happened. He urged them to ask the God of heaven to show them his mercy by telling, telling them the secret so they would not be executed along with other wise men of Babylon. That night, the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. He said, praise the name of God forever and ever, for, all, for he has all wisdom and power. Amen. So we see the shift there. So before we, I get into it, I'm just going to have us close our eyes and receive this transition of what is about to happen in the word. So, Father God, Lord, I ask that you open our hearts, our minds, and our ears. God, if there's anything that our, our eyes, ears, and our, our ears have heard, seen, or said that is not of you and that doesn't bring you glory, God, I ask that you'd rid that of us and help us to become more humble at your presence to receive you this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. You uh, awake this morning. Amen. All right, we get some breath in our lungs. I said it. I like to say this all the time. If you have breath in your lungs, I'm, I believe that God has given you the strength to say amen and hallelujah. Because um, one of my uh, pastor friends, Pastor Glenn Badonsky, he always says amen wall. So if you don't respond, I'm going to look back here because like, the, the the scripture says the rocks and the uh, the rocks will cry out if you don't cry out. Amen. So if you don't cry out, I'm going to look at the wall and say, hey, wall, cry out for me. So I, I like to to get some response here so that it makes me aware that you're paying attention. All right. All right. So no one could tell of this dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had. So he just ordered everyone to be killed that was wise because he wanted to make sure that someone understood what his dream meant. So ben but Daniel took on this task that he knew only God would see through. So Daniel was prob probably scared because he was tasked with this important um, duty or responsibility to interpret this dream. And you see in verse 16 and 17... It says, Daniel at once went to see the king and requested more time to tell the, the king what the dream meant. I really don't think he was trying to convince the king that he needed more time. He had an, another option. And we know what that option is. He needed more time because he wanted to go back to his prayer closet and he sought the Lord and prayed. He didn't go back to his, his books. He didn't go back to his newspapers or the dictionaries and try to find the words that meant right. He said, you know what, I'm going to sit at the feet of Jesus and find out what the Lord is going to tell me. Amen? All right. So he gave an extension for everyone else, but Daniel said, the only extension I need is sitting in the presence of God. So my question to you is, when was the last time you craved that moment of ex experiencing and pursuing the presence of God? You know, when, you, when you're at work and your boss tells you, hey, you got a deadline to meet, and you wouldn't go, hey, uh, I needed a little bit more time because I don't understand what the job meant. You, then you probably don't need to be at that job if you don't understand it. But him being stretched out was a sign of his strength being resurrected by God's own strength. He had a response and not a reaction. What was his response? Going to Jesus. He prayed, right? It's very simple. I think sometimes, and I think this is what God was telling me, it's very simple. Sometimes our response is to react, or sometimes our response is to think and try to come up with a plan and, a, and an idea or some kind of route that we can take to solve our earthly problems, our temporary pains. And I'm not saying you don't need to go see a doctor, you don't need to seek advice, but Daniel did that. Jonah did that. Joshua did that. Gideon did that. They prayed. 
They prayed. They sought the presence of God, and they prayed. So it says, he went home, shut those doors, and began to pray and ask for mercy and strength from God. And if you want to put it into a note, when you approach God with prayer, you deny Satan access, and you resurrect strength. Amen? When you start to approach the presence of God, you deny Satan access to your heart, and you start to resurrect strength. Speaking of strength, have you ever heard that phrase, uh, God will never give you something that you cannot handle? Amen. Now, whoever said amen is wrong. I want to I correct you there for a second. I caught you there, did I? Yeah, you're laughing there. But uh, some of us say that mindlessly. You say, God will never give you something you cannot handle. I want you to think about that. If he gave you something that you couldn't handle, then is it your strength or his? Right? So I, I don't believe God will never give you something you cannot handle because then you would be handling it by your own strength. I hope that convicts us this morning that it is not by our own strength that you function and operate. It's only by the Holy Spirit alone. Amen. So when you approach the presence of God, it is by his strength alone that we function. Uh, really quickly, Daniel chapter 6, verse 6 through 10. I'm just going to fly through this real quick. It says, so the administrators and high officers went to the king and said, long live King Darius. We are all in agreement. We administrators, officials, high officers, advisors, and governors, a lot of uh, titles there, that the king should make a law that will be strictly enforced. Give orders that for the next 30 days, anyone who prays to anyone divine or human except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions. And now, your majesty, issue and sign this law so it cannot be changed, and an official law of the Medes and Persians that cannot be revoked. So King Darius signed the law. But what did Daniel do? What did Daniel do? Verse 10. But when Daniel learned the law had been signed, he went upstairs and what did he do? Come on. Come on, what did he do? He prayed. I'm telling you, he did it the first time, and God spoke and revealed great mysteries, great plans, revealed wisdom to him. He did it a second time. There, the second time is probably the last time he should have prayed, but he said, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to pay attention to what the world says or what society says or what the person next to you. Or, you know, I'll even go as far as what the pastor is saying or what my accountability partner is saying or my husband or wife. I want to know what the God is revealing to me this morning. So he knelt down, even though he said, the next person who prays will be done with. He said, no, I'm going to go against the grain of what the world wants and what society wants. I'm going to go with what the Holy Spirit is saying. And, says, and he says, he knelt down as, as usual. And that's the key word I want to, I want to point out. If, and, and I'm in the NLT version. But he said, when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room. And that's the key word I want us to pay attention, as usual. Remember the good old days? But that was how Daniel functioned. His good old days wasn't being young and saying, oh, I have no more gray hairs, pains, and this and that issue. His good old days was saying, I have the strength to get on my knees as usual and approach the throne of heaven. Does that make sense this morning? So that's the purpose of us is to kneel down how much ever strength you have. If you got to sit, sit. If you got to stand, you stand. If you got to walk out this building and pray, that is the strength the Lord has given you to function and, and be guided by the Holy Spirit. So imagine if we exercised our faith every day, would that be normal for you? And I'm speaking, and I, I believe I'm speaking to myself mainly because that's what the Lord was telling me. What does your exercise, your spiritual exercise look like? Is it usual for you to approach the throne of heaven in prayer? Is it usual to tackle your situation in prayer? Is it usual to, to pray when you have pains and thoughts and fears and doubts? Is it normal for you to pray when you have a situation that arises that you cannot fix? But that's what, the, that's what Daniel's trying to teach us. How, how normal, how usual has, is it becoming of us to come before the presence of God and, and approach him? So our hiding place is in the word of the Lord. For he longs for you, he loves you, and he has said it many times, fear not for I am with you. I, maybe the, the kids in front of me have better memory, but you guys know that verse, fear not for I am with you. 
and that's that's this this joy that we have we have this this joy of the lord in our in our salvation our strength to say fear not georgie for god is with you georgie or fear not justin or jewel and ajin or whoever else because he is with you so it is our business to direct our attention to the lord as the author and giver of every good gift whether it's wealth leadership ownership pastorship servant husband wife jewel ajin it is our it is our business to direct attention to the lord and so this insufficiency of this world should drive us to the all-sufficient creator. Amen. The beauty of being a child of God is that we are no longer self-reliant, but instead totally reliant on him. Amen. We are totally reliant on him. We're not self-sufficient anymore. That's what the strength of the Lord means if you break it down. And we see that from Daniel's life. He prayed. And then what did he do? He prayed. What did he do? He prayed. And we see that many times over the course of our scripture as we, as we dive into the word. And so I want to ask, before I end here, I want to ask us this question. When was the last time you and I craved? And I want you to pay attention to that word crave. Crave means, um, you know what, I'll just be transparent. I had some donuts this morning. And I was like, mm, I haven't had a donut for a very long time. And that, that taste of that sugar was like still in my mouth. I was craving for another bite. And so I want to ask you, what is what is that? How much are you craving the presence of God, those moments where you felt God, God's hand on your lives beyond your control or your plans, but it just felt right? I'm going to say that one more time. When was the last time you and I craved for those moments where we felt God's hand on our lives beyond your control, beyond your plans, beyond your desires, but it felt just right? So that's where God is leading us this morning. I believe God is saying, does your prayer walk, does your spiritual walk, does your prayer life, does your, is your time with the Lord, does it feel right? Or is it just, I, I'm just making time for God. And I, real quickly, I'm just going to say this. That's where we got to start to separate things. Are we making time with God or are we spending time with God? Making time is, it's, it's a chore. But when you start spending time, some of us, you, you have kids, you spend time with them, right? You don't make time, you spend it with them because that's what it means. So when it means something to you, you start to spend time with the Lord. Amen. So the crazy thing is we can have these moments every day. Amen. We can have these kind of moments every single day. It doesn't take a Sunday morning church service or these four walls. I know Joseph, when you said you want a bigger church, I mean, I'll pray and, and we'll see what happens with that. But it doesn't take a church. It doesn't take four walls or seven mics or drums. It just takes the heart of a pure, righteous man. The word says the righteous man is ordered by, this, is ordered by the Lord. Amen. So oftentimes we get moved by the wrong things. So this morning as you... Start to open your heart and open your mind. I know that was a, a load of information, but I hope that you walk out being moved by the right things, by the right things of the Lord, not by the, the wrong things. And we, we sometimes we take the word and we, we take the prayers, we take the, the, the encouragement and the gifts and we misuse them and we don't, or we lay them like the scripture says, we lay them on the side and never use them at all. But God is saying, take up your cross, die to your desires and understand the Lord is with you. So fear not, for I am with you. Amen? So Father God, we just thank you for this time, Lord. I thank you for the few minutes that we had just to hear your word. God, Lord, I ask that you open our ears, open our mouths, God, even right now as we're receiving your voice, God. Fill us with the Holy Spirit that we may be able to walk, God, refreshed and encouraged and quenched in your love, God. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, George, uh, Brother Georgie, for that wonderful message. Within a short time, you know, so we received. And again, we are going to listen to the word of God uh, from uh, the senior pastors, Pastor V.T. Sam Kuti and uh, Pastor Daniel George will be ministering into us this, mo um, this I mean, morning. Maybe it will come to 